Eons have passed since the Peasant One made the ultimate sacrifice, releasing the people of Custodia from the twisted designs of the Grievous Miracle. Now, in this day and age, all the remains of the city once plagued by an insatiable masochistic fervor are the ruins upon which the City of the Blessed Name has been built. This is the tale of a miracle who so desperately desired to exist, a miracle that sought to be worshipped for all eternity. This is the story of Blasphemous II. But before we delve into the Penitent One's latest pilgrimage, I'd like to invite you to watch the full lore and theory series of the original Blasphemous game, linked on screen and in the description down below to refresh your memory of what's transpired. Also, it's time to give credit where it's due. Kudos to BentoWorks3297 for locating the easter egg hidden in the last thumbnail. If you look closely, you'll notice that Gloria's head has been hidden amongst the many folds of skin on Cagehead's body. If you're new to the channel, I've started playing a game with viewers where I hide an easter egg in the thumbnail of each of my videos. The first person to state what and where it is gets a shout out in the following video. Now, back to the matter at hand. For reasons unknown, the Penitent One was disturbed from his nigh eternal slumber. Eons upon eons had passed since that fateful day, when the High Wills were destroyed and the Miracle's influence began to fade from existence. The casket, held by Deo Gracias, witness to the Miracle and its works, had been petrified along with some faithful devotees due to the grand passage of time. But why was the Penitent One resurrected? And more importantly, for what purpose? These questions will be answered in due time, but for now, consider your penance one of patience. As the Penitent One traversed the repose of the Silent One, an area dedicated to his previous good works, he encountered the Faceless One and swiftly defeated him. Moments later, Anunciada, a divine messenger, descended from the highest of all seats to share a message with the newly revived Penitent One. She stated that the miracle will soon give birth to a new child and tasked him with preventing this from occurring. However, she warned him that the Archcon Fraternity, a brotherhood of sentinels handpicked by the miracle, guarded the passage to the highest point of the city of the Blessed Name. Along his journey, the Penitent One would unveil the three regrets that had been instilled inside the consciences of the Guardians and discover how this new age of mourning came to be. The Penitent One continued onward towards the base of the city of the Blessed Name and met Montañez, a master sculptor who introduced him to the sacred altarpieces of favor. These carvings were capable of granting the Penitent One enhanced powers and abilities by resonating with the memory of the icon it served to represent. Remember this for later. Upon exploring the Profundo Lamento, the Penitent One obtained an empty receptacle. Reading the flavor text offers some additional insight on what became of Custodia after the fall of the miracle. It states, On hearing the young man question, the elder's gaze filled with melancholy. Yes, this church belongeth to a bygone age, one so ancient, so chaotic, that it's as if it wanted to disappear from memory, an age in which time itself decided to stop in a perpetual sunset, in which every man yearned only for the designs of the divine. But so it happened that the faith of those people faded, quietly escaping from their hearts year after year. Even so, this abandoned church still stands, its foundations as firm as ever, as if it waited for something, as if it refused to give up the faith that so many had already lost. The lore implications packed into this simple glass vial are incredible. Not only does it confirm that an immense amount of time has passed, which I stated in numerous theory videos prior to the game's release, but it also provides the reason why the miracle manifested itself in the shape of a heart. Poetic as ever, the miracle sought to return home to the hearts of those who had lost faith in it all those years ago in a symbolic gesture they would captivate onlookers near and far. This lore entry also serves to support the miracle's newfound self-awareness and ability to exercise free will, which drives its motivations throughout Blasphemous II. The Penitent One eventually reaches the Garden of the High Choirs, where Proximo, eldest of the Holy Brothers of the Golden Visage, sits helpless. He pleads with the Penitent One to free his brethren and remind them of the dark punishment that once imprisoned them in times long past. As each new brother was rescued, they would create platforms that granted passage to the highest point of the tower. After exploring the site of the sacred entombments, the Penitent One encountered Radames, who held the first regret in his conscience. After his inevitable victory over the Great Preceptor, the Penitent One was transported to the dreams of incense. Interestingly enough, this world between worlds echoed the dream, where the Holy Guardian visages resided. Similar to those treacherous floating golden heads who guarded the three holy wounds, the chosen protectors guarded three sacred regrets. In Catholicism, 
Incense is often used in ceremonies as a symbolic gesture representing both purification and sanctification. It can also be used to symbolize prayers themselves in a visual form. This is incredibly intriguing because of its stark contrast to the dream world of the original game where deception and misdirection blinded the pious people of Custodia. The High Wills manipulated the miracle by their own sadistic design and sought to hide the truth from the masses, whereas the miracle, now operating on its own desires, seeks to reveal what transpired and sanctify those worthy enough to witness it. The first sacred regret tells of a couple who was unable to conceive a child. In their desperation, they turned to the miracle who had long been forgotten and was believed to have been extinct. However, after defeating Orospina in the Palace of Embroideries, the second regret reveals the miracle still lived, and sadly, it answered the prayers of that faithful couple. After the last of the Guardians fell, Lesmus and Infanta completed the testimony by sharing the final act of the sacred regret. The child was indeed born. But according to those who bore witness to the aberration that slithered out of its mother's womb, the miracle had allegedly erred in its will, which resulted in an accursed deformity that plagued the land. But was this simply a mistake, or had the grievous miracle returned to its twisted nature? Only time would tell as the penitent one continued his journey and arrived at the chapel of the five doves. Here, he found the child born from the miracle was preserved in a glass case. Although his physical form had long passed away, he had been selected by the miracle itself to witness every event brought by the return of faith and give testimony of the new birth of the miracle. With each dove freed from its cage, new locations from the past resurfaced. The penitent one would have to retrieve the stolen keys and free each of the five doves in order to finally reach the resting place of the heart and the skies. With each new enemy that fell, the machinations behind the birth of the new miracle were revealed. It sought to create a new icon that would gather all faiths and communion in an attempt to expand its diminished might. Desperate to avert its inevitable fate of being forgotten and fading from existence, it took great measures to ensure its survival. However, when the miracle manifested itself, it took on the all too familiar form of disease, deformity, and pain. After the last dove was freed from its cage, the passage to the Crimson Reigns was opened. The penitent one reached the apex and faced off with the first of the penitents, Eviterno, whose penance was eternal contemplation while he awaited his prophesied confrontation. After an epic battle, the old man was finally put to rest and the miracle child was born. After locating four unique altar pieces of favor representing the envoys, Cherzo, Gregor, Lebeche, and Haloke, the mysteries of the origin of the heart above were revealed. A young, malnourished child crossed the desert's scorching sands towards what he knew only as the great city off in the distance. With nothing more than the aid of a dried, twisted root, he limped slowly towards the towers that promised him hope. Sadly, when he arrived, he saw nothing but desolation and despair. The people of the city suffered in agony as they mourned quietly, awaiting the moment of their deaths. Devastated, the boy looked up to the sky and made a wish. He willed the clouds to assume the appearance of a heart, an icon of suffering that could bring restored faith to the people and knowledge that they were not alone, and thus the heart in the sky was formed. The penitent one tossed the altarpieces into the fire and melted them down into the incense of envoys which would mark his worthy skin as the one who performed the ultimate sacrifice, thus allowing him to return to the heavens. However, he had one final task ahead of him. He had to destroy the physical manifestation of the misguided faith of the people, incarnate devotion. In his first breaths, he revealed that he was indeed the magnum opus of a higher will whose motivations he did not fully understand. He saw his clash with the penitent one as a means to glorify his creators and so he fought, unaware that he was simply the last remnant and living will of the deific beings who had manipulated him so long ago. This is supported by his very appearance, white flesh speckled with gold, mere the exact appearance of the high wills who ruled in deception from their perch in the endless dream. The incarnate devotion and the penitent one faced off in an epic battle which ended in the former's demise. Sadly, the newborn miracle would die without ever understanding his true purpose, which was simply the perpetuation of the miracle's existence and continued affliction to the people, the dying dream of the high wills who had manipulated it eons ago. However, the penitent one would emerge victorious and the capricious miracle would cease to exist. Weary from battle, the penitent one found Anunciada and the four envoys in the clouds and ascended into the cradle of all blessings, 
where the great grace would watch over him for all eternity, preserved in both body and soul within the ancient canvas of light and time. At last, the penitence was complete. And that's all for this video. If you enjoy videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. It helps me know that you want more content just like this. Click on these videos here to continue your journey through the unknown, and I'll be there to guide you when you arrive. Consider becoming a member for exclusive perks like emojis, members only videos, and more. Or consider becoming a patron for behind the scenes content, unboxing videos, and sneak peeks of my retro gaming collection. Until next time, it's the Inhuman One, signing out. Join the Inhuman community today.